All right. Um, so I think I actually want to try and um, put that screensaver back up for just a minute because I wanted to talk to you about the artist. So give me one second where I test my skills. Okay. So I wanted to talk about the art and also the music that I played before while everyone was entering. Um, this image is by an artist named Harmonia Rosales. And um, she's an Afro-Cuban American artist and she's self-taught. And you may recognize something about this image in that it is um, a play on Michelangelo's uh, creation of Adam, which is in the Sistine Chapel. And it's a tremendously well-known painting. Probably all of us can conjure up an image of what that looks like. Um, what she has done is completely flip the script and reimagined this image. And she's done this with a lot of um, well-known images. Um, and obviously taken it from the perspective of a of God as a woman, a woman of color. And so this is called creation of God. Um, and um, <clears throat> really, I think it speaks to this idea of, you know, we are, first of all, if we're created in the image of God, um, it would make sense that God would have 9 million different faces, um, not just the faces that are so often portrayed as white and male. So that's something that I really like about this image. The music that I was playing um, was by Alice Coltrane, and I did not know that there was an Alice Coltrane. We are very familiar with John Coltrane. Alice was an American jazz pianist, an organist, a harpist, a composer, a singer, and she also happened to be married to John Coltrane. Um, so she is a legend in her own right. She was also a seeker of spiritual truth and was a religious leader um, in the Hindu religion. She was head of an ashram and she founded a spiritual community in California. So um, the reason I'm telling you all of this is um, because I am very intentional when I choose my images and my music when I'm hosting Heart to Heart. And to just back up on why, um, there's a couple reasons that I'm here today. One is because um, I'm here to give Joe a rest. He did his big teaching yesterday, and it's a lot to do too. So that's kind of the easy, the surface reason. But there's another reason that I'm here, and it is to bring the sacred feminine to the fore and sort of bringing what isn't readily seen to be seen to the front. Um, and so that is why I'm choosy about um, the images that I show in the beginning and the music that I play. And even if you miss all of that, um, I am still trying to bring forward that um, feminine aspect that has been overlooked, that has been um, pushed to the side. And it's, I'm here to bring that forward. So speaking of making the unseen seen, this is where I wanna talk about um, living from the heart operating system, if you want to call it that. Um, the heart is the thing, the way that we can see things that cannot be perceived by the mind. The mind is very occupied by the surface, what we see readily. And we can be sort of tricked or fooled into thinking that that's all there is. And it's real, don't get me wrong. I mean, what's happening in the world today is very real. Um, but there is a lot going on underneath the surface and our hearts 
are the way we can get past that noise and what seems so really real and start connecting with something else. Um, when you're doing resilience work, one of the techniques is often to ask what else is true? So when someone is in a um, like nervous system arousal state um, and you know kind of freaked out, um, if you can remember to think, what else is true? It starts you thinking about like, okay, like, yes, this thing is happening here, but what else could be going on? And so it's very similar to what I'm talking about with connecting to the heart. Um, and it's kind of like the ocean, the ocean depths. I read somewhere that um, we know more about outer space than we do our own oceans here on earth. And so that's kind of amazing. Um, and it, I mean, we know how infinite space is. It boggles my mind. Well, could our oceans be that infinite as well if we travel underneath the surface? And it made me think of our unconscious mind too. Same, it's just like that ocean. There's so much more happening beyond what our surface mind, what our conscious mind, uh, busy mind, planning mind is aware of. And all of that information is also incredibly valid and true, but we need a way to get to it. So I heard Joe say yesterday that the mystics are calling us um, and they want us to go deeper. So, well, and that also made me think of the inner evolution that Vivian talks about. So I had a mystic call to me um, as I was thinking about what I might say today and um, I'll tell you that story because I'm going to share some stories because I think it it illustrates ways in which I connect to my heart space. Um, the way I do it may not be the way you do it, but it gives you an idea. So I have these um, cards, these divine feminine oracle cards. And um, just for fun, I got them out and I thought, let's see, like maybe, maybe there's a goddess in there who has something to say about this. And I spread my cards out and I, um, I really did. I closed my eyes and I ran my hand back and forth. And then at some point I decided to stop and I picked up a card um, and she's great, but she didn't really resonate with me. And I was a little disappointed, <laughs> but okay. Um, now these are new cards and they're pretty stiff and they're also real thick. Um, behind that card was another one that was stuck. And this one did resonate. Um, her name is Yamoja, and she is the queen of the ocean. This is her illustration on the card. She comes from the Yoruba uh, religion, which is out of Africa. And um, she resonated with me personally, but I wasn't sure if... I needed to bring her here today. So I was just kind of letting that percolate. Um, well, then as I, um, when I thought of the image that I wanted to share with you today and I was browsing the artist's um, portfolio, um, she has painted an image of Yamaya, which is another name for Yamoja. And um, so then I knew for sure that she had something to say to all of us today. And I think it's interesting that she's queen of the sea. She's, she is known as the mother of all life. And wherever there are waters present, so is she. Um, she's sometimes depicted as a mermaid. And so as a mermaid, she lives uh, on the surface and she swims down to the deep as well. And that could be the ocean, literally, or it could be our human psyche. And I thought it was interesting, too, that water, if you think about it, is a vessel. And if you think about it, water is present in the womb of a human, a human mother. But water is also the Earth's womb. The ocean is where life began. And so she really does have an impact and, and can help us um, 
go down into those depths and uh, bring forward birth um, something new, something that we've never seen before. She can help us make the unseen seen. And the vessel, that idea of a vessel or a womb, that is obviously a very feminine aspect. And I have another story for you. Um, I was telling someone, somebody, a friend of mine asked me about this group. You know, what, what was here before this group? And I said, well, nothing really. I mean, we weren't doing this, which is wild to think about, but um, I told him how during my sanity walk, when COVID had just shut us all down and I was very desperate and kind of despairing and not knowing where anything was going. And I asked the question, what makes me feel better? Because it was all about me at the time. Um, and the, and, and then it's really like I, in my mind, opened my hands like this. Like, what makes me feel better? And just waited. Um, and I didn't have to wait long. Like, the answer was immediate when I thought of Joe and, and Loose Leaf Hollow and how safe and it feels like home when I go there. Um, but that didn't come from my surface mind. That idea was received by me. I was a vessel in that moment. And um, my friend said, well, you're not just a vessel, right? Like you did some stuff and, and all that. And, and I actually don't think I did a whole lot. I think Joe took the idea and ran. Um, but I thought about that phrase, you're not just a vessel. And I realized he's right. I am not just a vessel. I am a vessel. There's no just. Um, because to be a vessel is a tricky business. Um, you really have to be empty. Um, you really have to be receptive. You really have to have this fertile ground so that when the seed is planted, it can flourish and it can take root in however, you know, whatever way it's supposed to. So to be a vessel also means learning to speak the language of the heart. And the heart doesn't speak like I'm talking to you right now. It speaks in symbols. It speaks in memories. It speaks in images. Um, for me, uh, it speaks through Instagram. <laughs> I, think <it> meets us. <laughs> I think it meets us wherever we are. And I'm apparently on Instagram a lot. Um, but you really have to be receptive to that inf information wherever it's coming from. And um, it takes being able to expand beyond the confines of your own mind. And so that's really what I think happened when I asked the question, what makes me feel better? Um, it's like I opened up the top of my head and just let the information come in. Um, and so th those are not easy things to do. It is not easy to leave that surface mind and to just open up to the information that's around. And um, I can't say I do it all the time, um, but when I started this spiritual journey, one of my intentions was to learn how to live as guided by my heart. And so it is a ripening. It does come in, in fits and spurts. Um, sometimes I'm more attuned to it than others. Um, particularly when I have to talk to all of you guys, I really try to tune in quite a bit. <laughs> um, but the interesting thing is that now, you know, talking about emptying, talking about um, opening up the con to th past the confines of your mind. Well, we're getting into ter the territory of radical openness to the great mystery, which is a phrase Joe used last Sunday and really caught my attention. Um, the story was that Thomas Merton was getting ready to go see like the one guy who could do this, you know, and that it's really hard to do. 
um, but he never got he never got there. Um, so I took that phrase because I, I think it intrigued me because you know it's radical and mystery like those are two words that really get my attention. So I took that into my meditation last week, and um, here's my next story for you. What came forward for me was one of my spiritual stepping stones, which um, was becoming a mother. And when I say that, I don't mean with childbirth. I mean with conception is when I became a mother because suddenly I was responsible for another life. And that was my initiation into the radical openness of the great mystery. Because once you say yes to that, um, there is absolutely no turning back. And I know this because I really wanted to a few times, like, but there's no way out. The only way out is through, is forward. And you are committed to taking it wherever it goes because we don't know. If you have several children, each, each pregnancy and birth is different. I only have one. Um, I had no idea what to expect. Um, and I wasn't real graceful about this whole process. Um, <laughs> but now thinking back, um, it was the beginning of cracking open the surface and seeing past the stories. Um, our culture tells women a whole lot of things about childbirth and it's, it's, it hurts too much. Um, you know, you, you're not strong enough to do it. Um, I had, you know, other women who are mothers say, oh no, like I went to sleep and I woke up and my baby was born. Like that's the way to do it. Um, and somehow I went contrary to those stories. I decided to peek behind the veil and I decided to look underneath that fear narrative. And I learned that they're not true. Those stories are not true. Um, there is actually an amazing, awesome, incredible amount of power, maybe the most powerful thing a human can do, which is to bridge that gap between over there where our souls are and over here in incarnation. And so those fear stories take our power away. <clears throat> and also for the men, um, it may be too wild to really think about this. Like it, you may feel a resistance or a fear to this mystery yourselves, <clears throat> excuse me. And so my question to you in that place of fear is can you still sit in the radical openness to the great mystery and be there in that discomfort rather than um, doing what our culture has done, which is try to squash it or push it away or, or uh, medically manage it so that, um, we don't have to deal with that fear and uncertainty. So I think, I guess my final question to you guys and uh, to myself too is, um, are we gonna keep believing these stories that are on the surface? You know, are we gonna keep uh, thinking that they are true and absolute and that's all there is? Or are we going to um, decide to look underneath, decide to take a peek behind and um, consider the possibility that there may be other things, something else may be true. And I would venture to say that practicing with your heart is the way to explore that. And I think the more we engage with these deeper truths, and the more we bring those things up into the seen world, that is how we change our whole environment. That's where the change happens. When I'm 
fully invested in upholding the current narrative, it can't change. When I start putting cracks in the matrix, eventually it's got to break. And so I hope that my stories and I hope that my talk today has somehow given you something that might either encourage you to look behind um, the surface or um, given you some ideas of how you can start practicing with your heart. Um, so I think that's, I think that's it. <laughs>